It's thinking about it. Okay, I guess we're live. Hello. So we're live. I, yeah, I guess. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Now I knew it. see. I knew you guys were dressed up. You said this is a round table. You, <laughs> said, <laughs> you said prop. I thought for certain it was going to be a beer can. Did you guys punch me? Well, no, I didn't. <laughs> <No. laughs> you got my your chain head. mail. Oh, man. How's it going, me. everybody? I keep this for the zombie apocalypse. Those blood sucking freaks trying to bite through this. I'm okay. Is that real chain? Is that mail? real chain? No, it's a Halloween prop. <laughs> you think I have chain mail just sitting around the house? Well, that's fitting. To see, he already got us with his storytelling. Considering <laughs> who you're talking to. But tonight's tonight's beverage is uh, Balvini single malt scotch. Okay. Um, I got a diet. Man, look at you. Diet Snapple. Diet Snapple. Ah. Diet Snapple. I do have some whiskey. Uh, a little early. Italian beer. I've got a, I've, I've got like a small supply of, of Costco brand tequila. So okay, Nick, wait, wait. Not Diet really the fancy Diet stuff. Snapple. What? Diet Snapple. Uh, it's all I have today, man. I just got here. I have some whiskey, but it's too early. Here, oh, hold, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> yeah, we need Off to open the wallet, pull out your man card, and throw it in the fireplace. So in this interface, will we be able to see the chat that's going on or anything like that? Because uh, can that, can you guys the video not on see Facebook? It? Oh, that's it's, nice. Yes, there you yeah. go. That's yeah. you guys should be able to see the chat. Okay. We also heart. have private chat if we want to talk shit about any of the viewers. Oh, I see. There's private chat, and then there's comments. Oh, there's the comments. Is Bob, is Bob going to show up in the private chat? I don't know. That guy no, is all it. famous now. He's he does live streams and shit with Lou Diamond Phillips. He doesn't have time to talk to me. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. badass. Bob's in Young Guns Four. Yeah. <laughs> I've had already. This is twelve-year-old Scotch. This is. Hey, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have that. Show, Best show me that again, Greg. Pull that up again, real quick. I think I have that same stuff at home. Yeah, Doublewood. Yeah. Doublewood. Yes, sweet. In my Delicious. office at home. On the rock. Well. Bottoms up, fellas. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Three, three of my favorite authors, and then me. So. <laughs> well, like what I told my fans, about? I'm going to try to sit here and act like I know what I'm talking about while the rest interrupting the three of you who oh, do. Oh, hell no. Yeah. Look, the, you know, the I, I invited you guys to come together and, and, and chat because I've been sporadically running this uh, side gig with uh, Keystroke Medium. Where I just, I, you know, I, I get different people on and we talk about storytelling because uh, surprise, surprise, that happens to be a, a topic that I'm interested in. And I like to, to geek out and talk shop with people who have perspectives on that. And I thought, hey, I should probably uh, invite some people that know what they're doing versus just me uh, running my mouth about it. So, and I don't, I don't have a big plan. Uh, for this, I don't. I don't have like like a list of stuff. I always, it's always like very free form, and we just get to talk about whatever we feel like. We talk about shop, and uh, maybe something useful comes out of it. And, and and if not, we we just have a drink together, and and that's also fun. I figure so. Cool. Cool. I'll drink to that. Pope. Yeah, you got a, you got a nice setup there, and uh, Keystroke. I love those guys. You're talking about Josh and Scott, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've been uh, on there a couple times. Met them a couple yeah, times. they're they're awesome, man. I've I've not seen a more uh, comprehensive channel just dedicated to the process yeah. of writing and, and all aspects of it. From, yeah, uh, editing to promotion and production and all that. It's, it was really cool. So I had been thinking about I when I'm not actively writing a book, I, I still want to be doing something creative, uh, and and this has. Kind of filled that outlet so when i when when time allows i'll do these things um and uh, you know they just deactivated my account the other day <laughs> they, said, they said oh man you haven't been active we just figured you weren't gonna upload any more stuff and i was like no, no, no I'm, I, I just finished a book i'm ready to go again here here comes another one i've got a few guys lined up you might have heard of them so <laughs> well, i appreciate cool. the invite well, man. yeah thanks for having us just been looking forward to this and no, this is like this is like the fellas crew. Like all, all you guys, uh, Dean, Nick, Greg. I had I had read all of your books before 
I got into this whole gig. So wow. it was, it was, it was fun. It was, um, for, for me, it, it was, it was this weird, surreal process where it's, I, I started out, you know, reading these books, finding all of them because I was a fan of Bob. Yeah. You know, big head Bob. Yeah. And, uh, just, just kind of alighting on these stories and, and getting familiar with, with certain authors, yourselves included. And, and now I, I, I get to just hang out with you and that's strange it uh the the whole write a book thing and, and that, that kind of feels like sometimes a side note it's it's really weird yeah I, I don't know how long have you guys been doing this i've been at it since 2017 2017 yeah i uh, put out my first one in 2011 it was total crap um, <laughs> i redid it and put it out again and called it ambush and uh, yeah and then did all that and then found bob along the way when i was getting ready to start dimension space so that's my timeline from there to here. I've been doing it at the same time since August of 2012. <clears throat> I published the first books in January 2016 and then quit my job the following August to do it full time. So, wow. A long time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think back because I, so I kind of, I self published my first manuscript back in like 2013. But I had no intention of this being anything other than a hobby. <clears throat> but then that book failed and it was total crap. For real, I've thought about unpublishing it many times, but it did lead to my next series. And that's that was in 2014. Um, and it just took off and I just loved this. And uh, yeah, but back to Josh, your point earlier about, you know, hanging out with us now, I, I look back to some of the first authors that I talked to and I'm friends with quite a few of them today. And it's just like, this is a really cool community where I feel like if you um, are serious about writing and serious about just networking, it's very easy to do that. Uh, there's a lot of people that love doing that. And um, I've, you know, we were just talking about Keystroke. It's crazy to me you were talking about those guys because, geez, I, I feel like they're, they're a huge part of um, my networking experiencing too. You know, I was on uh, their their show like 2016, I think 2018 with Tony Melchiori. And it's like a huge business, but at the same time, it's small and pretty much everyone knows each other too, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Well, I think at our level too, right? What's that? I, I, I said, I, th I think it's like that at our level as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I would, I would consider us to be in a, in a circle of authors that are, successful but they're, you know they're not like stephen king money successful no. you know it's like we're we're journeymen um we can we can put out a successful book and when we do so people want to read it we can you know eke out a living but it's you know aside from nick out in his his, his vacation cabin you know, <laughs> <I don't, laughs> and like, we still get to interact with I'm, the people with everybody here like this in this format and, and yeah. It's a lot more personal at this level than it would be at Stephen King's level, I think. I'm sure he has a certain group of people, but not many of them are just his avid readers. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I, I, went to, uh, I went to a sci-fi convention in Charleston uh, back in November. And at the time, I was like number two on Amazon for sci-fi authors. One person there had even heard of me. <laughs> and you know, I think I prefer that. And, and my, my wife was like, oh my God, we just, this is terrible. I thought this is great. All these people could buy my books. They yeah. Like, they don't know about me yet. So, well, I, heard, a, I read one time it's that. It's uh, man. Yeah. Talking about, you know, uh, market uh, penetration, uh, J.K. Rowling, they said that of all of her potential fans, people that read her genre and people that like uh, that type of book, she only ever reached 35%. Yeah. And so, and she's worth, well, I don't know, probably billions. I don't know. Yeah. But she's so, worth yeah, a you can make dollars. a nice living just, just where nobody even knows you. <laughs> yeah. I, well, like I, for myself personally, I feel like I'm in the pocket right now. You know, like I've, I've got, I've got a good uh, readership. There's, there's enough people that are interested in my books that it, 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 it makes it worthwhile to keep writing them. Mm hmm. But I can still go down to like the store and, and 
nobody cares. You know, like, mm-hmm. nobody knows yeah. who I am. Nobody gives a shit. Like, yeah. I, 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 just, I just look like the, the unwashed hillbilly. <laughs> and I'm ignored. It's, it's yeah, beautiful. Your beard is very well manicured, though. No, oh, it's, it's, that is really nice. Right? Right? <laughs> It's you down. using a blow dryer and straightener on that or something? What's going on? There? Uh, I, I have to. So, what, the, oh, are we? We're going to talk about my my beard <laughs> regimen. Is that? Yeah. Okay. yeah. There, there's some storytelling. No, really. Uh, there's there's uh, my my wife kind of started me on the whole thing. She, she if you, if you don't take care of it, it's, it smells pretty horrible. <laughs> You got yesterday's you know, you get, breakfast still in there. You get your soup and your eggs in it, you know, maybe a few animals. <laughs> so she got me special shampoos and conditioners to to massage into my face while I'm showering. And then there's some oil that I rub into it afterwards. And then to keep it from becoming like this nasty tangled mess, I'll I'll, I'll comb it out with a with a hair dryer. Wow, and that's it, a lot it, of work. It it turns into the the gloriousness that you see. Well, I mean, well, you used to do all that. It work is a lot of work, but I don't yeah, have to do anything up here, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, all all the time that I would have spent making this attractive now is just devoted to this. <laughs> it's up, it's up, yeah. down. Your, your the plan is when it gets long head. enough, I'll just comb it over the top, <laughs> and then I'll be good to go, right? <laughs> uh, Every once in a while, I have like a five to grow, day growth of beard. My wife says either grow the beard or shave it off, and I shave it off. Oh, you can't do the rugged stubble thing. Mm-hmm. Oh but man, my wife, my wife has vetoed the idea. So. <laughs> vetoed. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Wives uh, enjoy that. They enjoy veto power. Yeah, I try. I try growing like vacation beard, but on vacation we like to go like snorkeling, and I can't get a good seal on my mask if I'm gonna. Hey, Chris, my nephew's on here. Yeah. But then I thought I'd, I'd shave just you know the mustache off and have one. Oh, of those hey, we have a bunch of comments. I just saw these. Oh, yeah. Someone can monitor those. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I, you know, maybe should. later on, as, as we go, maybe I'll scroll back through them and 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 pick out some fun ones. Okay, uh, I see. Right, yeah, Poole. y'all's accent suck. You, right Neil now, everybody's says, digging on accent. Dean's accent, so <laughs> I don't have an accent. <laughs> I don't either. I don't know what he's talking about. Do I sound like a Californian? Is this what a Californian sounds like? I don't think we have an accent. I don't know, dude. Is that what a Californian sounds like? Well, yeah, I, I, dude, dude happens a lot yeah. <laughs> when I speak. It, it it absolutely does. Oh man! So, if, man, you, you know what's surprising to me, Craig, is that uh, it sounds like you and I started pretty pretty close to each other. So, so you when know, like how was your first? You were book? you? What did you say? 2015, 2016 for you? So January twenty sixteen, I published Columbus Day. Yeah. Ascent- aces on the same day but that's but, crazy i had written the books over like eight ten years maybe and could not get any of them published so well, they, none of us could get anything published in in, yeah. in traditional right i mean well maybe no keepers got in the Nick way maybe but well but i have interesting stories about that i'd be happy to share uh <laughs> yeah my traditional experience and we can talk about conventions too because i kind of have like I'm in this weird zone where I'm like half indie, half uh, traditional published. And, you know, I've worked with Simon Schuster, Hachette, and really like I've gotten published because I've sold books, not because publishers wanted to publish my books. Like, I, well, I think that's how it works though. Well, so in the modern era. Yeah. yeah, kind of. But like, if I were to have sent Hell Divers, which actually we did send Hell Divers out to traditional publishers, and I got like, a ton of rejections. Um, and one of the publishers I've been working with in the past that had been selling quite a few of my books, they're the ones that bought it. But before that, like Orbs, for example, I self publish Orbs. Orbs, if my age, if, if I would have sent that to an agent, the agent probably would never have responded. Um, if I would have been lucky enough to find an agent to represent me for Orbs, they m- would never have probably been able to find a publisher. But after I self published it and it sold a ton of copies, then Simon Schuster comes in and buys it. So what I'm trying to say, it's just like, I don't, I didn't follow the normal process. I got lucky in terms of sales to get publishers. I didn't like, if I were to go out and try to do it the real traditional way, which is query agents, then query publishers. Like, I don't think I would ever be here. I would not be sitting here right now. Like that's, that's how a lot of authors 
grind out for years and years and years to try to make it in the traditional world. And then they might get like three or $5,000 for their first book. It might not sell any copies, but that's like, that's the normal advance. That's the average advance in sci-fi is three to five grand for a book right now. I dude, when I, when I learned that I was shocked. Yeah. Like, I, I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. So that's why self publishing, I think is so attractive to so many people that know what they're doing. I mean, you guys all know what you're doing. No, I don't. Stop that. No, I don't. <laughs> well, you know, I, I can, I can yeah. write a book. That's all I got, man. I I don't know anything about the. You got there's right. a reason I'm signed with Athon. It's because yeah. they know how to do all that. You shit. guys got you. So. <laughs> I remember you and I, Nick. We had a discussion uh, uh, early on when when I was first getting off the ground, and it was it was hosted by uh, Brian Crespin, Brian's book blog. Oh yeah, Brian. <laughs> My boy yeah. Brian, right? And, yeah, and, uh, Brian's a good guy. Mm -hmm. At the time, you were you were telling me it's like, oh man, you know, get get your uh, get your marketing game up, you know, learn how to read all those uh, those numbers, the stats, the statistics, and I, I, no, can't, nah, -uh. time consuming. I mean, actually, I remember when yo, you linked shit, up with man. Bob on that when he had that Ask Me Anything on Reddit. Yeah, and um, and. Yeah, I mean that just seems like it was just yesterday, and you've passed me up. You've written more novels than me. Not, that's not saying much. I really? Don't, I think but you so. Had, you, you had your well, well so you, you've got your your honeypot right now, which is your your tattooed series. Yeah, right? the tattooed the tattooed series. My tattooed series. That's what I that's what I think of it as. But you had like a bunch of uh, like invasion stories before that. Yeah, okay, my Sector got? 64 series. Yeah, um, that one was done by another narrator but bob's doing them going forward so he went back and redid my uh you know ambush and retribution and the prequel so yeah i've got i'm a total of five novels and, and one prequel i think you've passed me up oh wow well so it. congratulations good well, job thank, you're doing thank, great man. thank you i wish i could write that fast what's craig what craig what book are you on like like book 27 of, of <laughs> Uh, I don't know how you get about so quick. You and Nick both, you guys are God. Uh, my readers tell me it's like, oh man, you're you're a machine. You write those books so fast. Nah, -uh. nah. -uh. Um, <laughs> you, you two guys are killer. I can't believe how fast you get them out. Like three months. Jesus. That's why I drink scotch. <laughs> three months, man. For for what kind of word count? Uh, usually 180, 190. That's yeah, I was excited that's yesterday. That's you're pulling 180 to 190,000 words in three months. Yeah, and that's finished and edited and ready to go. That's yeah, I'm gonna have amazing. I'm gonna have four audiobooks this year. Damn. Do you do anything else? Ever? Yeah, I, I mean, I just I mean, I, on on heavy writing days, I write like 5,000 words. But on, yeah. I, on my blog, I said I don't sit down at a keyboard unless I know what I'm gonna write. Yeah. So if, if I don't have the scene just in my head, I'll go ride the bike or walk the dogs or cut down trees or vacuum the house, something like that. While I'm thinking about it. Yes, I vacuum the house sometimes, honey. I think she's back there in the background calling bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? Excuse me. I'll be right back. <laughs> um, no, I just, um, I don't know. Eventually... I'm going to slow down the schedule. Um, this year is actually a good time not to do that because COVID. I mean, how am I writing? So, yeah. yeah. We're, we're lucky being here in Northern Vermont because there's, there's me, my wife, my neighbors, and some cows. So, yeah. some cows. <laughs> <laughs> I walked off from those cows. But um, yeah, I just, I. Uh oh. Amber Alert. What? Yeah. Is that is that you, Dean? Yeah, in Atlanta, Texas. I forgot to mute my phone. Sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. I didn't even oh, man, know there's oh, man. Texas. Down in, down in Florida. Yeah, God. Three mm -hmm. You know what? I just I just finished uh, Udo, my second Udo book, Udo the Warlord. Ooh. And I was I was quite pleased with myself because I did 161,000 words in, in, I don't know, five months, maybe six months. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping up that pace. The world is ending, but I've kept up my pace. And uh, through months, I'm... I kind of, I don't want to say screwed myself, but set an expectation that these books are going to be 180,000 words, which is like the average length of a Stephen King novel, I think. Um, 
And he writes them in, he writes them, I think, in three months. He writes 2,000 words a day for 90 days straight and gets the book out. Um, I think he only writes like, oh, hey, who's that? Hey, puppy. Hey, puppy. <laughs> Mapping the Shih Tzu. She's in one of my new books. Oh, Actually, wow. But... He doesn't piss on the ground. <laughs> Send me something that he hey, here's a here's a fun question. I, 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 just, I just noticed this. It says between the four of you, if you could collaborate on a book, would you? Ooh, yes. I think that'd be Ooh, hard. I'd love that, but um Okay, I'm so, so far okay. behind. Eighty percent of the proceeds go to me and <laughs> between Joshua, Dean, and Nick post apocalypse. Right. Yeah. yeah. I write I write pre-apocalypse books. So. <laughs> well, I don't really write apocalypse books. That's. Well, that, yeah. I mean, that, that's my big. That was the big uh, uh, thing that got me on the map. I haven't I haven't even thought about writing apocalypse. Uh, hell. Yeah, I don't right. know. It's like a while ago now. I've been I've been writing sci-fi for a while now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Commune was pretty much post-apoc, but. You have yeah. uh, all gifts best bestowed, right? Oh, which yeah, yeah. AI, and then yeah. Udo, which is like kind of it's almost like fantasy science yeah. fiction, right? A little bit. Uh, yes, yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing where you go with that storyline because it's. Oh well, thank you. Thank that you. whole drum. It's as big as the drum can be long, so that's apparently can be a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. I don't know. Um. I, I I suspect that that a lot of the people in in chat right now have read it, but I, I'm always nervous about uh, discussing details of my stuff or, or spoilers. Yeah, I don't like, oh, it, you know, on, on on the topic of storytelling, um, it's so funny when I'm talking to my publishers and they're saying, "Hey, we, can we get like a blurb together for this book?" Or, or you know, how would you sell this thing? Or how would you describe it? And I don't like that process because when when somebody's starting one of my books, I want them to go in with as little information as possible. Mm -hmm. I want them to know as little as 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 I can get away with when they're getting into that story. And it's it's usually the discussion is more what they're not allowed to put in the right. in the blurb than than right. what they are. It's like you can't discuss this, you can't put that, you don't want that because it's going to give away stuff. But the thing um, is, is you, you're it's you're caught between a rock and hard place in that. Too oh yeah. Because yeah. You, for instance, on my story on solitude, for a long time I just um, marketed it, it as the last man on Earth discovers the last woman stranded alone on an international space station, and most people just think, okay, well it's a love story or it's this, and you're like, you know, um, there's no way one man can get up to the space station, so. Um, and I left so much to, up to the imagination. I think there was a lot of people that just said, well, that's not a story for me because I didn't tell them enough. I didn't tell them that there's yeah. a space plane and there's this effort to fly up there and rescue her. And so recently I've been running a new, um, putting some posts on Facebook and um, advertising through Facebook. And I changed the blurb or the, the catchphrase is, um, um, the last man on earth races to area 51 to find a space plane because he's just found out basically I'm cutting out a few words here, but he's just found out the last <laughs> woman stranded alone on the space station and she knows how to maybe fix the world, but she can't get there. And so I wasn't telling people enough of what the story was about. So I was missing a whole audience segment because mm -hmm. it wasn't on their radar. And so if I you know. don't tell them certain things, you can you'll miss opportunities to get the story in front of people that might like it the best. Yeah. It's it's so hard to draw that. It, it always ends up being a compromise. Yeah. Between between me and the guys because you know they, they, they and they you know they give me all of the reasons that that you just listed too. It's like you know if, if it, you, you've got your your core audience and and they're going to just read whatever you put out and and you're good there, but. You're trying to get more people, you know. It's like, what? Why are you doing this in the first place? Why do we write a story? We're trying to share an idea. We're trying to to convey some some thought that we had to an audience. And if you don't do the things that you need to do to 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 bring more of them in, it's like, okay, well, wh wh why are you engaging in this then? Yeah. You know. Um, but but it is. It's 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 always just this this 
this nightmare. I, I hate describe. Oh man, you're a writer. What do you write about? Does anybody else get like the cold sweats when somebody asks them that question? Because I hate it. I don't talk about it anymore. And that's the thing. Good. Like, when we were discussing this earlier, I think the first year, the second year maybe, when I first started seeing some success, I was like, you know, maybe people will recognize me or something. And that never happened. And now it's like, I don't care at all. Like I actually enjoy having an online audience because it's easier to communicate with them by doing that anyways. I, I'm kind of an uncomfortable person in public. A lot of the time did have a guy yeah. at me at Lowe's. I was shopping for a girl with my wife and he started waving at me. He's like, dude, I love hell divers. And like, I kind of got scared because oh, I was yeah, recognize <laughs> you in public. <laughs> so I don't know. Well, especially it, because of how crazy the world is right now. Right. It's yeah. like, yeah, there's, there's, there's a mob that's, that's going out for someone's throat every minute. It's like, I don't want any of that. I, yeah. <laughs> Well, and it's, even, I feel like that that's happens. I don't know. I, you know, I feel like the community is really good for the most part, but I do feel like I've seen other authors attack other authors and I see. Yeah. Yeah. Life's too short too. For that. yeah. Um, so or, it's like affecting every fans to attack other authors. That's what really sucks is what is on Twitter or something when they get their fans to attack somebody. Oh yeah. Yeah. I that's. Mean, I saw J.K. Rowling get hit real bad, but I think, you know, when you say something publicly now, and you do have an online audience, you yeah. should you should expect for people to respond to you, and that's yeah. one thing I think. Personally, I have taken the stance that I don't talk about politics much. I try to keep a positive brand. I try to keep things fun, but you know, there's been times where I do speak my mind and, you know, I, I need to expect that that's going to upset some people. That's just the world we live in now. So it's, it's gotten a lot worse, frankly. Where, where I'm at at this point really is I, I try to put as little of my own personal beliefs out there as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and th this is, this is different to what I used to be. You know, I, I used to be a very, of course, I, you know, I used to be younger, right? When you're, when you're young, it's very easy to know everything. And it's, it's very easy to know what is, what is true and what is false. And, and it's so easy to exist in a black and white world. I've never experienced more personal growth and perspective on the world as when I started writing books. Because yeah. when, when you do this, you, you have to embody the mind of your characters and you have to write all sorts of different kind of characters you have to have you know the hero but you have to have villains and all the 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 spectrum in between what's my motivation oh well <laughs> but you do you're you are standing in as as uh, essentially the actor for the yeah. characters that that are in the book and you, you, have, you have to have think to convey like they them uh, realistic otherwise you're not going to be able to forecast what they would do yeah Absolutely. And then, you know, it, that process, man, it, it's really made me more, um, so much more open-minded than I used to be to where, you know, just, just five years ago, I, man, I, I, I knew everything that I needed to know. And I, I didn't need to really expand my worldview. Everything was locked in. I knew what the answer was. And now, uh, you know, 2020 and 41 years of age, I, I've kind of realized I don't know a goddamn thing. <laughs> the more you know, the more you know you don't know, right? Oh yeah. God! And and you know I've just got to point out. So I, I don't want to put whatever it is I'm thinking for the moment really out there, because I would also be really bummed if if my readers were trying to intuit my intention in the story. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like I I, I don't know how, how how much you guys have have looked into various like literary theories like death of the author or anything but i'm a big believer in that i don't i don't i i want the work itself to be uh consumed evaluated i don't i don't want who i am to color that process mm -hmm. you know yeah. like yeah. i w w once I, i've written a thing and sent it out there i have no business having anything to do with it anymore it's like my readers will ask me oh what you know what 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 was what did you mean here or or what was the thing because i leave a lot of stuff open in my stories you know like mysteries and stuff and, I, and they'll say well oh, what's the answer here and it's like i can't tell you i'm not allowed to 
Yeah. And they think I'm being a dickhead. It's up to but you. It's, it's not. I really, I really believe that. I think like if I if I just tell you, it's going to diminish this experience. You know? Yeah, that's one way to look. I think I'm kind of in the middle. Um, I do feel like after I birth a book that I still I still have I feel like I'm still trying to get it out there. So my, my, the marketing for me is still I don't know. Like I don't yeah. completely separate myself from it. I still will talk to readers. I mean, I have people that are trying to connect my universes. So a lot of my readers think that Extinction Cycle and Helldivers are connected. And they've come up with these crazy theories. I even had a guy last week explaining exactly how I could connect these if I wanted to and like laying it all out. So and you're I, over there taking notes. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> definitely see what Josh is saying, but at the same time, like I'm, I still try to, I still like to discuss those things or come up with ideas. And sometimes readers will give me ideas that I haven't thought of for future installments in a series, for example, like Helldivers. I remember three years ago, a reader telling me, "Well, what if this happened?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's that's a great idea," you know. So. Yeah, I actually encourage that. You pay him royalties? Like, offer or? notes. <laughs> hey, let me know what yeah. you'd like to see yeah. next. Yeah, I get some great ideas from you guys. He's going to guess I've been outside I, right now. I see lots of uh, speculation on his uh, X Force spoilers page on Facebook. And people <laughs> speculate awesome. about, oh, this is where the story's going and all that. They're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have the most rabid ever, Craig. True. Don't you guys agree? I mean, if you get, uh, even if go to Fifty Shades of Bray, that group is one of a kind. It's a great uh, group. I mean, it's really great that all these fans are interacting because of stuff we wrote. I mean, it's they they made friendships online because of us. Yeah, yeah. You got to meet a bunch of them at Brayfest too. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. I think Nick, I should have been there. Josh. I know, man. I wish I would have. <laughs> yeah, I, I I I couldn't swing it that year. I. Yeah. I yeah. What was it? It was. It was you were short, short. in Europe or something. I think that's what it was. Yeah, I would remember right the time I you guys were doing that. that was in Germany, Germany. Germany. Oh, right. Dean was in Europe too, but Dean flew back. Great friends. He's a pilot, dude. He's a pilot. Dude, I was. That's what I was going to say. He's a fucking pilot, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't actually fly the airplane. Well, yeah. <laughs> he flew back. Hey, you know, Josh, you talked about. You know, what do you tell people about being a writer? My wife and I have gotten to the point where you just say, oh, we're retired. Are we working from home? Oh, and good. <laughs> people say, oh, what do you do for work? And I'll say, I'm a writer. And usually the conversation just drops because usually when, when, when I say I'm a writer, people assume I'm living in a shed somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I barely any money or anything. And that's the end of it. But then when I, people who want to pursue it say, oh, everybody out there knows somebody who's a writer or wants to be a writer or they oh i want to write a story someday it's, it's everybody wants to write a novel it, man yeah. but th th then every once in a while you get the people who are oh you know i've never heard of you i'm like oh, God, i never heard of most authors either mm -hmm. and it's oh you're you're self-published oh and my wife was <laughs> my wife was in a yoga class with some woman and woman kept bugging her body and she's like yeah my husband's self-published it's like Oh, so he's not a real author. The website. Like, <laughs> you can't say bitch. He's been on the New York Times best all list six times. Yeah. What about, what about the word bitch? But yeah. So. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I agree. That attitude is still out there in yeah. the public that you're not. You know that? I haven't. I haven't broken that list. So I mean, there's there's a there, there's a certain level. Of, like there's different tiers. I kind of feel. Uh, as though I'm still junior to you guys, because I don't, I don't think that I've, I've got the same reach you do, really. I, I think though, honestly, Josh, because I've talked to you before, and I, not only do I feel like you've changed in like your, I don't know how to explain this, like your, not your personality or anything, but the way you look at things. But I do want to say something about your writing, like even from the beginning, from Commune, you've had some of the best characters for a debut author. That I mean, you are just a fantastic author. So I appreciate that. It, the first yeah. book, I man, I, I would I would change a lot if I could go back and do it. But that's very all, kind of you to say. Like, Udo but, was so the, the you painted such a textured world with that, and the, and the characters were just kudos, man. Great job. Thank I, you. I really enjoyed that one. Thank you know, you. I have I have something that I want your guys' opinion on because. Mm. 
And Josh, you might be able to give me a perspective more than anyone because Craig and Dean, you guys have your series. I mean, Craig, you have a fantasy series too. So, yeah. um, but for me, like, so I have sci-fi and I have thrillers. Like I have Trackers and I have Sons of War, which are both thriller series that are post-apocalyptic, but they're pure, they're basing, hey buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Randy. N nanny, N nanny. Dogs are really just my favorite creatures on the planet. Yeah, yeah. me too. Me too. Every dog, every book has to have a dog. For me. <laughs> I don't want to put dogs in my books. Some of my books are just too brutal. Yeah. I'm no. sorry, Nick. What were you saying? No, it's okay. It's okay. So then I have my sci-fi books. I have orbs. I have hell divers. And I have yeah. sci -fi. Yeah. Um, But the, what I kind of want to discuss is how readers see things because, like, and I worried about this before, but like I have readers going from hell divers to sons of war and i feel like a lot of readers don't understand when an author is trying to make a jump from even if you have the same writing style you still kind of it's not a similar plot but it's it's an end of the world type plot but you have science fiction versus total reality and i've i've seen some of the most criticism i've seen lately for me personally is readers that don't like my thrillers that like my sci-fi or writers that you know or the opposite and i guess how do you deal with that as a writer not the criticism but how do you write like how do you keep that in mind like when you're putting together a story like josh if you're writing udo and then going to like all gifts bestowed or commune like does is that in the back of your mind like how different this is going to be and what people are going to think about it i get excited about it um well, what, look, what, what I can tell you is um, what I what I perceive personally to be my strength as a writer. Uh, and and I, I think different people will have different opinions on this. But in, in my own mind, I I I can um, write like a chameleon, really. I can I can adopt any voice I need to yeah. to to create the the experience that i want for the reader and and i'm constantly playing with that uh when i'm when i'm working on different books and you know a different book or different subject matter is an opportunity to to flex that muscle or, or exercise it hmm. so if you go and read commune it'll read differently than all gifts bestowed or if you go and read udo it'll read differently than mm -hmm. uh anything else oh, completely or, different yeah, yeah totally do, different voice something no one knows uh which is, is kind of like a, a, a side standalone that i did that wasn't a bob book um it, 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 yeah. it up for, sorry i just got a question <laughs> about it but uh what what i'm really doing is is i'm trying to create something that's it's it's a little bit for, for me personally it's a little bit more than story it's something experiential I want the reader to be able to intuit things about the story and the character and the character's state of mind just in the writing and how, how I put a sentence together. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I've kind of been working with and tweaking. So when I'm, when I'm doing that, when I'm jumping from one thing to another, honest to God, that's mostly what I'm focusing on. I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, working on dialing that in. Mm -hmm. I know that some people are not going to be happy that I'm not writing another commune book mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm focusing on something else. Um, but at the same time, I know that, that there's an opportunity there. There's an opportunity for people who are out there that, that are not interested in post-apocalypse type mm -hmm. stories that are going to be interested in something else that I do. And there, but there's uh, a common so thread what, too with your, you've got conflict, um, true conflict in both stories. And it's, um, you can see it coming in Udo you had conflict of a different type and commune and um, same thing with you, Nick, you've got your post apocalypse and then you got your near apocalypse and, but it still comes down to the conflict. You see the characters, you see how they respond to the conflict. And um, so you hope that that brought, that will, will appeal to a broader audience. And even though you've jumped a little bit out of your normal uh, genre, there's still that yeah. common thread to carry people through. Yeah, like like Nick Nick's book. Okay. Nick, your Hellblazer series is so far after the apocalypse that it's really mm -hmm. an adventure mystery story. I mean, it's, the, the characters are great, but 
what really hooked me was, why the hell are they on this airship? They've been up there for 200 years. What the hell happened? And that sustained yeah. me through like, well, like five when they revealed the mystery. And then the characters are going kind of from their adventure story. Dean, your post-apocalyptic story um, got me hooked on what the hell is going on here? And, and I got to play with Dean at the end of every book of theirs. I'm like, I have no idea where this guy's going with the story. <laughs> I had no, of course, then, then the jerk tells me the plot of the whole story. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. We're, we're sitting in a Denny's or someplace in Florida. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, so, let's, uh, let's about just, uh, I, write, I write a fantasy series. What, what helped me separate the, the X Force and the Ascendant series is X Force is mostly first person. And the Ascendant series is entirely third person. And it was, yeah. it's not quite young adult, but it's sort of Harry Potter-ish. Um, and I deliberately wrote it in a different voice. And your question, Nick, is real interesting to me because before I finished the X-Force series, I'm gonna start a new series. Mm -hmm. It is urban fantasy. Yeah, you told me about that. Well, not the plot, but you told me you were gonna do that, yeah. Yeah, set in present day Earth, it's like, do you know the uh, Jim Butcher's um, Harry Dresden series, Dresden yeah. series? Yeah, yeah. Dresden's a wizard in Chicago and all that. It's it's not gonna be a wizard in Chicago or anything like that, but it is a urban fantasy set on present day Earth, fantasy with magic, not a magical beer can. So- That's right, Brian, hurry up. It's gonna be interesting um, Sorry. How, how I do that. I haven't started writing the I've written scenes in the first book, but not really started writing the first book. But I'm, you know, am I going to hold on to the audience? Am I going to, my wife and I are talking about it. Am I going to bring in new people who read fantasy and don't read sci-fi? Am I going to hang on with the next force readers because it's a similar voice and, and style of humor? Um, I don't know. Well, that, that's something. Yeah, it's something to contemplate, I think. For me, like, the, I'm writing a new series that's completely different than everything I was talking about earlier. And I do worry that there's some parts of it that might be compared to Helldivers, just like Helldivers is compared to Extinction Cycle. So that's always in the back of my mind. And it's not like I'm worried about getting negative reviews. I want to make sure that my stories, especially like when I'm, the hardest part I feel like writing a series is making the next book better than the last. But it's yeah. even harder to come up with a new series that's better than the last because you're starting from scratch you have new characters you have new ideas new plot and for me that's like i've been working on this new book all year it's basically two books now um i've got kind of gone back and rewritten so much of it that it's blended together but i do think like I do worry that the voice is a little bit similar, that some of the characters are a little bit similar, but so that's, I think is the challenge. And I was just curious if you guys think about stuff like that too, I'm assuming, you know, well, all writers do, but I've, I've kind of thought about that and, you know, just, just to kind of like wrap up what, it, what I was, what I was getting to earlier, it, you know, let, let's take tangents. I love tangents, but the, the point really was there, there was like two things, right? There was one thing that I heard as, as a young man, which was like the, the best advice for a creator that I'd ever heard. And it was, it was the guys that were doing mystery science theater 3000. Oh God. You guys remember that show? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I went to the last live shows they did. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, back in the day, when, like when I was a kid, when I was in high school, they had just come on to comedy central. And uh, they, they were, the, I, I remember watching like this behind the scenes thing. It was like the writers and Joel Hodgson and all those guys. And they asked themselves the question, who's going to get these jokes, right? And then the answer was, the right people will get this. Yes. And that's always what I've thought about when I was like, when I first started writing Commune, I thought, you know, who's going to be interested in this? And I said, the right people. Yeah. will be interested mm -hmm. in this and that, that that's always what i've gone by and then nick to your concern uh you know like trying to come up with a new series that's that's as good as the last one or tops i don't i don't know that that's the thing that you need to be burdening yourself with like that that feels like a lot of pressure i mean yeah. look at you know? i think i think you need you just you need to write the thing that that speaks to you the most and where you are at the time that you're trying to write it. Mm -hmm. well, 
but my the the series of books that I put out was was very strategic, and I don't know if it's worked or not. Maybe it has, but like I I, I did commune first, partially because you know even even early when I didn't really know what I was doing, I did recognize that post apocalypse stuff was was pretty big at the time. Okay, well I could. I can put it in this and that that maximizes my chances of this story getting out. The story itself did not have to be post-apocalypse. I could have made it a western, and it would have worked just fine. I could have made it anything, but I thought, okay, this is hot right now. I'll do this. Uh, but then right after that, once that series was done and I completed it as quick as I could, pivoted immediately to hard sci-fi with All Gifts Bestowed. And then right after that, wrote the first Udo book, and then went to something no one knows, and now I'm trying to finish up Udo, and that's bouncing all over the place, man. It's, yeah, it's you like, really you know, are. Yeah, you've got post-apocalypse, you've got hard sci-fi, you've got kind of young adult slash sci-fi, um, and and you know I've I've got some ideas for for some other stuff like kind of thriller horror later on. The whole reasoning for that was because if I get pigeonholed into one type of genre, mm -hmm. I'm going to quit. I'm not. I, I, I can't do it anymore. I can't. I can't write the same thing over and over again. I can't stay like w w with one subject matter, because me personally, okay, I get bored really quick. Uh, d depending on on, you know, if I, if I'm just like doing the same thing, it's one of the reasons I'm an engineer in in. Uh, the the avionics business. It's it's because that's a hard job and it's like a new problem all the time, and you you don't get bored doing that. It's it's a it's the reason I'm still doing it, even though I'm I'm doing well as a writer. It's because it's hard. There's problems to solve, and so I'm 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 thinking less about personally. I'm thinking less about you know com commercialism or. Mm -hmm. how happy I'm going to make somebody with writing a thing, focusing more on what is the one idea that I want to explore for, for whatever book or whatever series I'm going to write. And then from that, that singular idea, I'll craft a whole story around it. Characters populate the world that, that are necessary to express it, circumstances that, that drive it home. But but I, I don't know what your guys' process is, and I'd love to hear it. I, I want I want you to talk about your process after I shut the fuck up. But <laughs> for me, it's always it starts at the idea. There's some singular idea that I want to convey, and it's usually a, a, a question that I want to ask the reader because uh, I don't have any answers. I have no answers at all. It's just, usually, it's a question like, "Is is this a what, what do you think of this?" And then I hand it off and you know let them run with it. Mm. Um, and then everything proceeds from there. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you guys do? Well, I'm interested. Here's a question for you. You're writing Udo the Digger. Udo is. Do you, did you write the first book and then go on to the second? Or did you create like, here's Udo's story and I'm going to break it into different books. Do you create an, a story, an outline for the story arc for the whole series? Uh, yes ish okay it's it's um i i have like different tiers of of preparedness okay. um and i've i'm i, I feel where udo's story is going in the end. yeah okay. i feel like i know um or, or i excuse me rather i feel like i'm getting better at it as i go like i i when when i'm doing series versus standalone like the only I've only worked on two series, right? I did the commune series, yeah. Which which um, you know a lot of people seem to love, but it's it it gets it starts off eh, a little janky, because commune one was the first book I ever wrote, so there was there was a lot of learning that happened throughout that series, and you know when you when you get to the fourth book, you'll notice it's like way different than than the first, and a lot of that was like rapid growth, uh, uh, OJT. You're right. Um, Dean, Dean knows about OG. <laughs> yeah. His background. Yeah, you look at uh, my first 2011 book and then look yes. at uh, Amplitude and you'll see a title okay. shift. Well, just, just your time in the service as well, right? And it's, like, it's all OJT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it was it, the, the, the way I kind of do it now is like I, I when, when I'm working on something, I have to know what the end is first before mm -hmm. I 
because the end is really that's that's like the that's when you drive the point home right it's like you, you're you're dropping breadcrumbs throughout the story and you're you're giving hints and uh, you're playing a game where i'm i'm playing a game with the reader it's like can you figure out where i'm going before i get there exactly. and it's fun i love playing that game then you get to the end and bam you 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 give them just enough to connect the dots if they were paying attention but you don't give them the answer i don't give them the answer yeah. you might want to it doesn't you don't you, don't do it the way I do. It's 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 whatever you want to do. I don't like to give the answer. I like to give all the pieces that get you to the answer. Yeah. So, uh, so I'll, I'll know the I'll know the ending, and then in the first book, like if it's a three book series, I'll map the first book out like really in detail. The second book, I might have like these are the things that I need to accomplish, but I don't I don't know chapters. I don't know breakdown. Yeah. And then in the third book, all the way at the end, it's it's like. This has to be where I end, yeah. and then I write in such a way where I it, it's flexible and I kind of leave things open and I'm I'm very nebulous. I do a lot of cheating, you know. People people think I'm a genius. Well, I don't know that they do, but but I've I people have told me it's like, oh man, you've got this whole thing mapped out beginning to end. It's like I kind of do, and then I'll go back and and you know change what I was doing halfway mm -hmm. through. And if I'm if I've written sloppily enough, I have the wiggle room to do that. Yeah, your outline or whatever is—it's a living document. There's a lot of things that can come and yeah. go from it, and you can change things. And you're—you're you're the god of your story. Yeah, Nick, in your Hellbinder series, mm -hmm. did you know when you started writing it how they got up there in the sky and about the? Did know? El Popo, El Popo, whatever? <laughs> did he exist? Yeah. No man, just in, my nightmares. in the beginning. My nightmares. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't have like I had books one through three real mapped out in my mind and then on paper. But after that, like actually, so Helldivers was a slow burn project for me. I was still. I had just, I think, quit my job, um, and I was writing nights and weekends for Helldivers. I wanted that to be my a tradition book. I wanted that to get sent out to traditional publishers and try to get that published that way. Um, and that is what ended up happening, but it was only supposed to be one book. So my outline and my story in the whole book that we sent out was just, that was it. Like at the very end of book one, that was going to be it. X was just drifting off. Um, oh, okay. but then the, the publisher wanted to do three. Um, so I sat down and I put together an outline. I started working on it. I was like, okay, here's what happened after X drifts away. Um, and then, you know, who's that? It, it's Olive. Olive. Okay. Olive. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god what a beautiful animal yeah good lord so nick you faster you're gonna leave it hanging after one book i mean no, i course. wanted to do a standalone and i wanted to have this ending that was going to That's make people think, like, book, though. i mean you have so much unsaid in there yeah i, I don't know it was know, brilliant the way you did it though it all came yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you really figured out how to tie it all together and bring it together so. Yeah, yeah, I remember um, one of the the rejection letters. It was from Tor, and they said from the opening line they knew that the main character was going to die. And I just want to be like, "Well, we're on book seven now, baby." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start. I'm going to start. I'm going back through the comments. I'm going to start throwing questions up that people have asked, so that we can kind of uh, address these guys. Okay? Yeah, definitely. I got this one here, Mr. Thomas Hunter. I'm assuming he, he meant to type who. Who writes off the cuff and who writes character sheets for the books? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Done both. <laughs> if you have an idea for a character and you're writing it, you're like, this is totally different because my original idea was bogus. Yeah, well, they develop. They hear that. What What do you say, Craig? You, you have an idea for a character, and as you're writing it, that character changes because you're writing what's true to that character. Your original yeah. idea was not. It's like, like Joshua introduced Gibbs in his second comedy book. He wasn't in the first book, right? That's correct. Yeah, and Gibbs is like, to me, the archetypal character for comedy. And he wasn't even in the first book. You had that idea for the second book. Yeah, it seems to, the, like there's there's three big personalities. There's Jake, Gibbs, yeah. and Clay. Yeah. And uh, it's, Di different people seem to, but but Gibbs is is definitely like a popular stand. Gibbs is a real person. Gibbs is Gibbs is one of my uh, closest friends. 
Oh, oh really? I went I went to college with with Gibbs. He works at the same uh, company that I do. That's um, cool. I figured you were watching a lot of Deadwood when you formed. No, when you no, I, Clay, I, I, no, for I Clay's have, character. Oh, uh, de- <laughs> yeah. Bob, Bob, and I had a discussion about that. Um, Clay, the so so. I I, what what. What did we decide? We decided it was okay that we we kind of drifted into that territory. The 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 deal with Clay was was kind of I was I was I was going in a certain direction with the character that kind of fell into that rhythm, and then Bob picked up on it and said, "I'm gonna just do a, a, an Ian McShane impression <laughs> when I'm when I'm doing this guy." And when he spoke, work. I was seeing Ian McShane every time. Yeah, did it? Yeah, is the oh yeah, yeah. there he is. There he is. Watney and Fick and. X and everybody, yeah. But yeah, I mean, so the, the Gibbs uh, character was really like I, I knew I wanted somebody in in the story that that knew what he was doing, because that was kind of the, one of the premise premises of of the book was that it's it's like the apocalypse and, and nobody knows how to survive in this situation. You shave with a dick. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> so I, like I, I heard that. <laughs> I wanted this hard ass marine character and I was like I've I've never you know I didn't serve in the military I didn't, I, didn't, I don't know what that that mindset or lifestyle is like but I've got this best good friend who was was a marine for you know a good a good portion of his life and I just I knew his mannerisms the way he spoke and you just kind of cheat you take that and say okay I'm a, I'll transplant that into the story and so this this person that everybody's fallen in love with is is this guy that I just hang out with every day. I think the only difference between Gibbs in the story and and person that he's based on is in real life is that person in real life is is a bit more of a hard ass than than Gibbs is. Like like Gibbs will will spend time worrying about you know if 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 we killed this person was that the right thing to do. Right. Well, Gibbs is also like you know, I gave a knife hand to a civilian, and that's not what I should have done. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, whereas, whereas my friend, it's 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 like if you know if 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 you catch him when he's when he's in a bad mood and threaten him, he's just gonna put a pill in your head, and he's not gonna care. <laughs> so you know, I I thought eh, let's 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 tone him down. Let's let's make him a little more uh, sympathetic, maybe. <laughs> so Nick, I got a question for you. So yeah. your your first book you said was the flop. The yep. second book the second book became a Kindle World, right? Oh, uh, that was my second series. My first series yeah. was Orbs. My first book was called The Biomass Revolution, okay. uh, and then I wrote Orbs, and that's that was uh, self published. But then Simon Schuster came in and bought three books in that series, uh, and then I was. Uh, well, they had second, they had first, so basically when you go with a traditional publisher, there's office, often a clause in their contract that gives them first look at whatever you do next. And by contract, they had first look at Extinction Cycle, but they wanted to wait, like, I don't remember what it was, like a year to even read it. So my agent was able to get me out of that, and I just self-published the Extinction Cycle. That's what became a, a kind of world. Yeah. 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 And you're still doing Extinction Cycle. With, so, with- other authors right in that yeah the, um the actually the very last extinction cycle book published today is by walt browning um it's called warrior's fate he's got a four book it's called extinction survival um it's this extinction survival s- series it's set in my extinction cycle world so when when kendall worlds went away all of those authors that had written like fan fiction books they all got taken down so i used my small press to to republish a bunch of them and then a few of them like adrian smith and AJ Sykes and Walt Browning, they continue to add new stories. And but eventually, like now, I'm done with the ex- Extinction Cy- Cycle season two, which is written by me and Tony Melchiori. That was the second part of the main storyline that ended in June, and the very last spinoff book published today. So the Extinction Cycle is no more. Uh, but it's like twenty. God, I don't even know how many books it is now. Um, and part of that is because it was a Kindle World. I mean, Kindle Worlds was pretty cool. Um, they just got rid of it for no reason. I don't know. Or I mean, I'm sure there was a reason. It's probably a financial reason, but um, it just went away. Yeah. yeah did you, 
it's like a little series set in like New Zealand or something, right? Or yeah, Extinction uh, New Zealand by Adrian Smith. Um, yeah. And Blackstone does the audiobooks. They have a, a New Zealand narrator for that. It's pretty cool. Crikey! Um, or whatever the hell they say over there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded right, I guess. <laughs> so, so I had heard that if you, if you are self-published, and even if your book does well, you won't get a traditional published contract, but you did that. They came in and bought bought a series from you after it was published? Yeah, I mean, but that was also back in 2014. So traditional publishers will still, still, still uh, like snap up really good best-selling self-published books, but they'll scoop up all the rights. I think what, what you probably heard is like Hugh Howey got a deal where Wool was picked up as a paperback only by, uh, I can't remember what comp was that Hachette maybe? I can't remember which publisher, it's one of the big five. But anyways, they bought the rights probably from, I think it was like a million bucks for, for the paperback rights. And he got to keep the, the Kindle rights. And that's kind of every author's dream, right? Like to have your books go into bookstores, but you get to keep what you're making on Amazon. Well, that was pretty much the one and only deal that ever happened that way because, and I, I remember seeing Hugh Howie talking publicly about it and the publisher has, I don't know if they talked publicly about it, but since then, I don't know a single major publisher that's done that. And the reason is because they want all rights. Like even audio publishers now, some audio publishers like Blackstone, who does my Helldivers books, they're they're now got they've gone into the publish uh, the business of publishing all formats. So like for Helldivers, I was thinking, okay, I'd really like to just publish the or publish all the versions except for audio. Like you guys can do audio, I want to do the other stuff, but it's just not as appealing to them because you know they want everything worldwide rights, even foreign language rights. Some well, of them, seems, some of them are like, even taking up movie rights, I believe. Yes, they are. Yes, oh, wow. See, it, man, it, 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 they they just like to. They want to control it. It makes like sense. I mean, to control as much as they can. I, you know, I think that's why um, ACX. If 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 I th personally, I think if I can keep keep rocking there, I, I might just stay there. You know, I the Udo was a deal signed with Audible. Mm -hmm. Something no one knows was a deal signed with Audible, and uh, I don't I don't know how much I'm allowed to discuss as far as details. So I'm going to keep it very nebulous. But that would say it, zero. He would say, Shh. <laughs> "Yeah, I, I know, I know." I'm just kidding. Um, but well, no, no. Uh, there, there's like like I I, I I can't really discuss anything concrete. But I mean, um, they were good deals, and and I'm grateful to to Audible for. Uh, for for brokering that, you know, well, well, not brokering that, but 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 putting that out there, you know, it was it was pretty nice. Um, but but honestly, just that compared to what uh, Bob and I managed to do on our own, just through ACX, uh, like like commune and all gifts, they they did pretty damn well, and and you know, no real marketing or anything. Yeah, and I think that. The, the the start of that was based on Bob's popularity as a narrator. Um, and then I, I would like to suppose that the end of it was that there was something decent there that was written. Yeah. I, I wouldn't assume it. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I kind of feel like the, the more that you can keep those middlemen out of the equation... And, and still, you know, maintain your reach to your audience. The better off you're going to do. There's so many, there's there's so many people out there that are willing to, you know, give you uh, give you this service. But you you know, we need a cut. We need a percentage. And I think but there's the a trade off. I mean, Nick, you've gotten some great exposure through your through Blackstone, right? I mean, it's, yeah. I know you. There, they take a big, uh, obviously a good sized piece of the pie. But um, your overall exposure that they bring to the table, it's it's definitely got it's not a zero-sum game yeah and i can share some stuff with you guys like orbit i think my extinctions so one of the reasons i sold my extinction cycle season one to orbit back in 2017 i mean that was that made my career right there um and i mean the the self-published versions had made my career that's what really allowed me to to do what i'm doing now um 
pay off debt and stuff, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But Orbit came in and they made me an offer. And I said, I had told my agent, I'm never doing another traditional deal again. And the reason I decided to do that was because Extinction Cycle had kind of run its course by then on Amazon at least. Um, and they said, you know, they had this huge reach into bookstores with mass market paperbacks. And I thought, okay, well, let's try to sell half a million or something like that, because that's what they had done. Just, they just did that for DJ Molay. His um, um, remaining series kind of followed the same course as my Extinction Cycle, except for his did really well with Orbit. Mine did okay. Like I think my Extinction Cycle mass market paperbacks have sold over 120,000 copies in paperback in stores, but I won't see another dime on them ever again. And I thought that that would also bring me more readers, but I don't think, yeah, I haven't seen a change at all. So there's just like, there's definitely benefits of having that reach. Like I've been in airports now too, but it hasn't changed things financially for me. And it definitely hasn't changed, brought in more readers that I know of, because I feel like a lot of paperback readers are not the ones that engage online. That's more of like your digital and your audio. I feel like, I don't know. I could be wrong on that, but uh, you know, I, th I think there's a piece like my, my wife, she, she's she's a fantastic focuser for, for me she's like you know okay exposure great but they they have that the, the story with the art with the artist right well you come come play at our bar we're not going to pay you money but you get exposure right, right. it's like yeah. what's what's the yeah, dollar we're... signs how much money is coming into my bank account you know so because neil had asked i'm it, oh, sorry it's it, it sounds it, it it sounds grasping but you know you got to pay the bills yeah. You got to keep the power on, you know, yeah. it's, it's like, okay, great. More people have seen my work. Did I get paid for it? Like that, that's what this is about, right? Like I, th this needs to be a sustainable process. And yeah. you know, ACX pays 40% royalties to, um, when you're doing it directly through them, Joshua. So publishers, when you like audible, you're getting 15% of the overall, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's just way you just wake make way more but for, for got to be honest like commune you've done extremely well on acx but i can think of countless other authors that haven't done anything on acx like Dean no, I, done really well too you know i, like, I yeah I, I get that there's 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 a very significant luck component in me it's, being not, it's not luck i mean the stories are great bob narrates them that's a huge advantage Right, but, but how many stories are out there that are fantastic, that are better than mine, and nobody's going to know about them because there was just there was not that perfect storm of, of circumstances that yeah. brought them to the fore. Yeah, yeah. there's definitely there's, some luck and timing I, involved I, for sure. I guarantee you guys, there, there's there's people out there right now as writers that that are fucking Hemingway. They make us look like a bunch of assholes. Nobody's ever going to know that they're out there because of of. The, the state of the industry and, and because there's a thousand books published every day yeah literally and, and yeah. you have to pay to play now too you i mean that's something we could talk about but i just see that dean has a question here maybe you want to jump yeah i i, I put uh, that up because actually it's kind of fortunate you did that because i was going to go ahead and premiere a little piece of news here tonight tonight let's do a, it in a book cover this is going to be the audio cover for the next sector 64 book um and it's, i see a share screen button here so i'm going to try this out Go for it, man. Maybe Let's see what see happens. The next cover for I haven't I haven't finished writing this one. I'm still in the process of writing it. This Stick, is not the next book on. coming out. This is the next Sector sixty four book coming out. Is that better? Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I can see you get there. All right, so share screen. And share screen. All right. And I gotta oh crap. I gotta I gotta authorize it to share the screen. So um Y'all keep talking, I'll be right with you. No, we're just going to sit here silently and make this awkward. <laughs> yeah, not so at all. Is that part of Sex for 64 going to be Sex for 65? Or? <laughs> <laughs> you're actually, you're going to see something about that, right? Here in just oh, a moment. Shit. Oh, hell no. I can't do it anyway. Oh, well, shit. It's not, it's not letting you? It can says you I draw? have to, to do the change. Can you just draw it? <laughs> Now to do the change, it would call it. I would have to reboot um, Chrome. What? Which, yeah. God um, damn it. <laughs> here, wait. I have another way to do it. Put it on post your phone. Comment. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Dean, post it in the comments, and then and then Josh can bring it up as a comment. Yeah, I'll, tr I'll try it. Hell. Well, here. Let's see. Actually, I think that's. 
Um, so anyway, I won a contest the other day uh, for Tom Edwards. He was giving away a cover. Oh, yeah. All that, this that is was... not that cover. I, I bought one of his top tier covers. Um, the other cover might be a new cover for Solitude. Um, but I, I like Tor, Tor was on here earlier. He, um, he made the art for Solitude's current cover. And so we're going to go with that it's for a while longer. Is, but... What's that? I've... I said he's very talented. I've seen some. Oh, of that stuff. guy is he's, awesome. He's something else. I love. I love his work. But um, so what, whenever I'm trying to talk and go through Dropbox at the same time here. Oh, yeah, multitasking. Yeah, but um, well, well, while we're sitting here, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that uh, anybody who's listening right now should go check out Brian Crespin's blog, Brian's book blog. I'm texting with him right now. Yeah, he's because that he man he is he is a prolific reader he is a fantastic interviewer or interviewer reviewer and i and i don't say that just because he gave my books good good ratings he's actually good at what he does and if you want to you see that keep up with the new stuff coming out you should be checking out what he writes oh we see it yes on oh look at that on slide right. yeah sector too far <laughs> all right that is <laughs> That is full of awesome. And you see who's online. Is that a Blue to, Heron uh, title? Blue cool. Heron. Blue Heron. Yep. And, uh, I love me some Blue Heron. Yes. Yep. And narrated by the one and only. R.C. Bray. Yes. Bray. <laughs> Matt Duff asks, what is the best series to get started with in Dean's library? I think it, I think that's the Tattooed series, isn't it? Yeah, I would start with Solitude. That's uh, a moneymaker, ain't it? Oh, uh, yeah. It's, I got a new house from it. <laughs> and a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Not really I'm new. It's just new to me. You and actually, <laughs> uh, what do you guys think but, of this question here? Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, my uh, the, the the giraffe, the beetles in my book that are obsessed with gambling and all that. Yeah. I, I, oh, I, I love I, their ship names too. Oh yeah. <laughs> I didn't do it, or I wasn't. There's no video proof. It's <laughs> <laughs> a new. New ship called uh, We Avoid Temptation, but it keeps finding us. <laughs> <laughs> That's that sounds like an excuse I've made to my wife. Yeah, yeah. I, I have thought about doing a novella based on the Giraffe Ethics and Compliance Office. <laughs> <laughs> I love how, I love their definition of ethics and compliance. So yeah, sounds like a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy story. The new. You guys thought about doing like side characters for your? Uh, I need to have a novella for Bob. Nick, what? Uh, sorry. Yeah, I've thought about doing uh, minor characters. Um, it, but what I do is, so I'm kind of known for killing off characters, but I also write post-apocalyptic fiction. I mean, it just happens. When you write when you write a series that goes on long enough, characters are going to die. It's like The Walking Dead. That's kind of what I compare it to. But uh, there's been a lot of minor characters that have filled in the gaps that major characters have left, and then they become major characters themselves. And I love doing that because it allows a series, like if I, I have more ideas than I have characters, I feel like. So if I want to continue something and try to reach this end goal of where I'm going with Helldivers, for example, I really have to kind of uh, find ways to bring in new characters that people like and that they often are minor characters that fill that void. That's how I do it. I mean, doing another, I thought about doing spinoffs, like um, Rhino is one of my favorite characters in Helldivers. Yeah, I'd love to do something about him and the Casadores and like El Pupo. Uh, that would be cool, but I don't know. I also feel like I only have so much bandwidth, so it's hard to focus on something that's not part of the main storyline, too. Yeah, I try to write arcs for minor characters in the books instead of giving them their own stories. I mean, there's so much to tell. Do you guys ever feel like you're? Your side characters are, are the the place where you really get to play in your stories. Yeah, you know, it's like you, your your main characters. You know that they've got a certain a rhythm, a certain archetype that you that you need to maintain. Yeah, but if if you have like, oh, I need a side character for the scene. It's like I could have some nameless, faceless jerk off that just comes in, yeah. says a line, and then goes away. Or I could make them eccentric as hell and have some real fun with them. You guys ever do that? That's how yeah. I yeah. Nuki, the nuclear weapon. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Four books before we explode. <laughs> It was a throwaway character, and I was like, "This is fun writing this stuff." And then fans loved it. But yeah, it was just grew out of nowhere. I've I've found in in my books that that seems to be when Bob's having the most fun. It's not, you know, because we 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 talk a lot when he's when he's working on my stuff, uh, and and uh, it's it, you know the main character is like he. he a lot of times like he can make him his own and and uh he'll enjoy it but it's like the side characters where he, where he really starts having fun yeah because he'll he'll ask me you know well well this, this what, what do you think about this character who who should they be or whatever and i, I said shit man you're the professional <laughs> have fun yeah, I'm, yeah. You know, I asked Bob I'm, what kind of impressions he could do, who who I'm, he could impress. Well, know. it's like I'm, I'm I'm working with you on this be, because like you're you're the you're the 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 pinnacle of your industry, right? There's there's like there's there's a there's a few on a very short list, right? Like there's Ray Porter, R.C. Bray, and, and like a, a small listing of others. It's like, man, I'm I'm working with you because I want your talent. I want you to have as much fun as possible. Screw around, do stupid shit. Let's yeah. see what you come up with, and and like. It seems like his, the side characters are where he really starts playing around, and it it, he, it almost seems like he feels like, well, it's safe to do this on a side character because I'm not going to have to worry about remembering what I'm doing later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said he's done some like really strange words or you know, like a difficult vocalization for a certain character that he thought was going to be a small side character, and then in that particular series, it turned into a main character. So, yeah, he didn't like to go too far out of limb on the main characters. I think he's doing French accents here. He does. Oh, shit. He was at Brave Fest. Think, he said, speaking of which, speaking yeah. of which, speaking oh, of which, you summon the god. I think the <laughs> motherfucker's in here right now. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna see if I can invite him. I don't know if he's busy right now or not. But look, I'm just, I'm just gonna copy an invite. And and mail it over to him, with no no expectations made or or fucking given. <laughs> but I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna send it over to him right now, and 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 maybe he just he happens to. I'm gonna say join us. Come over to the dark side. Yeah, right. See, if, let's see if we can get him in here. Right. You don't Come have on, Bob. Brett. That's not actually Bob, you guys. That's a fake profile that's posing as Bob. Oh, okay. Are you sure? No, mm -hmm. it's Bob. <laughs> it's Bob. <laughs> I was like, say, whoa, why in the fuck did Ray Porter get mentioned before me? <laughs> I mean, that sounds like Bob. That's yeah, Bob. That's Bob. Bob. That's how I know that, it's Bob. Does that not sound like him? He's just so incensed. <laughs> All right. So, so oh. yeah, I've. I've so I sent an invite to him. Let's see if we can get him to get in here. I've got something I can play for you from Bob this morning. Some, some We're, Jeopardy music. Fuck yeah, you, oh Bob. Yeah. Click the invite link. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I asked Bob to do some voiceovers for a, um, a commercial I'm going to put together for Hulu. Um, I'm going to try to advertise on Hulu because they've got this new thing. I don't know if it'll work. I'll figure out throw some money at it and see if it works. Yeah. But I asked him to supply some voiceover. And he's like, sure, sure. So he shot it over to me this morning. And I think you guys will love this. It's he really did a great job. And and uh, let's see if I can find it here. Talk amongst yourself while I Yeah. Hey, are we gonna be going a little bit longer, you guys? Yeah, I'm, like, dude, I'm here for as long as you guys want me. I gotta I gotta give my dog her diabetes shot real quick. So I'm gonna step away for like five minutes or like a two minutes. That's so fine. I've got till 9.30 my time, so like 12 more minutes. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, man. We're going to end then. I'll probably just wait to give her her shot. <laughs> no, I'm ser – seriously, I'm here for as long as you guys want to go. It's only 6.19 for me. So, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Bam. Yeah. Oh, there he is, the man. Bam. The man. <laughs> you'll go as long as I say you'll go. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> yes, sir. What's up, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> Bob, I'm right here for you. Oh, I love seeing that beautiful face. How you been, man? 
Sorry. Man, you've been doing a porn shoot? Why is that so foggy on your glass there? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you got some Vaseline on the, on the lens. Yeah, that's not a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> What's just, that delay? I'm just crashing. <laughs> Ah! I'm all right, Bob. You're gonna need some headphones or something. Right. I'm hearing big, all big delay. Gets up there. <laughs> What's up yeah, with that's the delay? A huge delay. Jeez. I'm just crashing. I'm hearing myself. Jeez. Yeah. Hold the fuck up. <laughs> Put in the all earbuds, right. Bob. Bob, I, I'm convinced that the problem is you, man. The last time we did a live stream, we went through the same kind of tech shit. You said, hold on. <laughs> Out he goes. <laughs> so while he's while he's coming back, so he did some really great voiceovers, and then he added this one. Not that they weren't all great, either, but let's see if I can get this to come through here. There's got to be a modern tech what would you do if you suddenly found yourself as the only living being on the planet solitude answers that question in a race against time army pilot vaughn singleton earth's last man rushes to area 51 in search of the aurora space plane he's just discovered commander angela brown the last woman is stranded on the international space station and barely alive find out what happens get solitude today Available in print, audiobook, and ebook. Shazawasa. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I was like, I said, man, that was a funny ass hillbilly accent. He goes, that wasn't hillbilly, that was Houstonian. <laughs> I'm like, oh. yeah. I said, well, your Houstonian accent's as good as my Boston. Wicked bad. Really bad, man. Oh my god, I I need to get Bob to do promos for my stuff. <laughs> That's fantastic. Damn, he's talented. Oh yeah. Are you gonna use that, Dean? Oh well, you might you see a version better. of that commercial. I'll pop, I'll post it whenever it's all done. There might be a version. Okay, I got I got Bob. Spoiler alert. Let's see if he works this time. Is it better, Bob? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, much there better. Go. There we go. Oh, right. so much better. I figure I'd, I'd crash you motherfuckers, tell you what a horrible job you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> we're, Bob, we're, we're dying out here. Please help us. I've heard, I've heard minimal fucks. Yeah. I've heard, yeah. I'm, dude, I'm trying to catch up. I know. Only two more, fucks yeah. given. The more of this that happens, the more of fucks you're going to get. Okay. Good so, point. Good point. Look at this. Look at this whole side with all the ridiculous looking facial hair. Is it more magnificent than the guys. last time you saw me? Yeah, you look fucking. You look so stupid. <laughs> ZZ top. He's gone the full ZZ top. You never go the full ZZ top. <laughs> oh, no, man. I don't know. And then Dean obviously real likes my look or something because you ain't have that before. And you're like, oh. People Bob keep asking one. me why the long face. <laughs> yeah. I do it because I have no chin. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the my my chin is right there. Yep. Mine's right, well, I, is right exactly up. three centimeters below my bottom lip. It migrated from here. <laughs> oh, this has been fun, though. I've been listening and stuff, and uh, kind of screwing around, working on my uh, website and all that. So I just figured this would be some fun background noise. You're working it on is. your website again? Yeah, because I'm. Working How many on times are you gonna redo your website, man? No, I'm working on a store, so I'm, oh. I'm trying. Oh, to make cool! It look Braytopia. Great. Do you want to plug Braytopia? Braytopia, yeah. yeah. Like some Braytopia. You can go there now. I decided I'm gonna make it like real fun and flowery and rainbows and happy. Yeah. But, <laughs> but that, that's not... gonna work for your, your post apocalypse listeners. Yeah. I get why say it again. That'll, that'll work great for your post apocalypse listeners. Really yeah. <laughs> well you'll see. It's not gonna it's not gonna be all flowery and stuff. I mean there's gonna be flowery language. I know well, that. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be the, I think it's going to be the first like merchandise shop that comes with a rating. So I think it'll have to because it's, <laughs> look at it. It's got happy colors and like Brady Bunch. Oh, I love the crap. little daisy you got on there. That's, yes. that's, that's a look. So, you know, you'll see. I've got ideas. It's going to be fun. 
And actually, uh, the guy who's running it with me is the guy that uh, started, uh, well, he, he and a bunch of other people started the Fifty Shades of Bray. So he uh, he's going to be running the store. So I said, we got it because people had asked him for a lot of stuff. I said, I got to get this stuff out there, but I have absolutely no desire to, you know, get everything shipped and packed up. It's a chore, right? It's a, it's a big nightmare. chore because I, I did it before very minimally. Yeah. You yeah. know, with the I saw the mug. You showed that before, Craig. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. With all the all the names on there. Actually, I found a sticker of that today. I was looking at it and I'm like, I, I got to see who's on there and, you know, see if I can actually remember who those characters are. <laughs> I remember the the wow. commune covers we did together were like you had to ship them out to me. I had to sign them and then ship yeah. them back to you. And then yeah, you were shipping pretty... them off to people. Well, yes. Yeah, I wonder if you made any money off of that. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. I don't no. know. <laughs> we had stuff get really lost did. in the mail for like a year. <laughs> no, I don't think. I, I think if anything, it was a couple of bucks, and I figured you owed me for something. So, for I our day, we outsourced ordering, uh, production, and fulfillment to a company in Kentucky. Yeah. It is, and they do a great job for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, I like too that I I buy stuff from your site, and you yeah. don't know. Oh, great. Because then I'm, I am contributing to the to the universe of Craig Allen. I'll send it to you, dude. No, I know. Yeah. I, I know. I know I got the in. But I'm... Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, do you guys know about the, the RC Bray bobblehead? Yes, I've seen yeah. it. Yeah, the uh, through Audible, right? Yeah. Is it, that wrapped up yesterday, right? Yeah. The end? yeah. yeah. We're sitting sure here, um, I think, next Monday. No, next Monday is Labor Day. That's right. Yeah. Somehow about who wins it. Somebody's gonna win an RC Bray bobblehead. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Bob. Bob gets so much free rent in my head already. I can't have a bobblehead <laughs> in my fucking room, <laughs> staring at me That's... disapprovingly while I'm trying to write the next fucking book for him to narrate. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I just I try and keep everyone happy. That's all. That's you know what? You know what? I finished uh, uh, Udo too. It's coming at you. I don't know yeah. when. Good, because I don't know when I'll be able to record it. Because there's intermediaries and shit, but I, I I got it. It's ready to go. Good. Hey, Bob, Good. we have made a question. At Grayfest last year, you said you hate doing French accents and one other. I forget what it was. Oh, French. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You said French. Um, Fantastic. I'm going to write a book with all French people. <laughs> I love it. And Ray Porter's going to love narrating it. <laughs> <laughs> Make a my own French. Just like I do. What's up, Nick? Like I did with that and fucking Chicago and Florida yeah. and did Bob just say hi to me? Florida. Yeah. Yes, he did. Hey, Bob. That was great though. Yeah, I was like, hey, man, they probably forgot how to pronounce him. Funny. Yeah. Oh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. You didn't tell Bob to do that. Huh? No. You didn't, Nick, you didn't no. Tell Bob the, the, the odds uh, pronunciations for Florida. Oh, you talking to me right now? Yes. Yeah. Well, out of it, I'm reading this dude's comments. It's like, what is he drinking right now? <laughs> is that the all caps? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a we... ball full of mercury mounted into them. I'm gonna put this. Look at this. <laughs> That's like a go kart and a chronometer and a four Tesla coils and a special skin I designed. Now you got a UFO time machine. Now kiss my monkey ass. Please. Do you tell guys me. remember? Do you guys remember bath salts? Yeah. <laughs> <James Wolf Rice. laughs> That's Florida man. <laughs> Okay, uh, you tell me this James Wolf guy doesn't know where we live. <laughs> no, but hey, Bob, Bob, I still get questions almost daily on why the mispronunciations. And I I just... Mispronunciations? Is that kind of like mispronunciations? <laughs> they, it was him. <laughs> because of the writer, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, just, I just laugh. I don't really... I, I don't know. I think they're great. Sometimes... You, you, you Things didn't just happen, so I'm like, I'm, I'm just gonna go with it. I figured I know. they've been no. around. That, that was a genius idea. Yeah, they would have forgotten how to pronounce the names. Yeah, yes, I figured Bob, dude, Bob's the genius here, not me. Like, I take wow. no credit for this at all. That was great. Yeah, I tell him it's a narrator. I get yes. these questions a lot. If you pop into the Hell Divers Anonymous group, yeah. yes, sir, Hell Divers Anonymous. anonymous. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> anonymous, I would pop uh, in anonymously. <laughs> yeah, there's questions about that almost daily well yeah. i figured well the, no the actual cool the cool thing about it is that they left it <laughs> when they started um yeah. like i got like corrections to do 
Yeah. And they marked all of them. They marked Chicago and Whoa. Florida and uh, <laughs> all these. I'm like, did you, you really react? think yeah. I said it wrong that many times? So I had to <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> the backstory that Nick is. Wait, black <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So they're like, oh, okay. But the fact that they left it and you didn't say anything was like, all right, cool. I guess they like it. Or they I just, like, dude, I love it. I want to have to go back and make all those corrections. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I remember really the story you told me about how you came up with um, the first thing that I heard read by you was The Martian. And I remember you told me the story about how you came up with, ooh, look, boobies. On my computer. Because right. yeah. <laughs> it, it, the way it's printed. In the book, you're right. Yeah, you know, uh, that. so that that's fun. Uh, that, that like, I, I just listened to The Martian um, y- y- before the plague hit when I was still, like, in my car. And I was wondering about that because I've never actually read the text of The Martian. And I was I was trying to picture like what what was it that 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 Bob had to narrate where he goes, look, boobies. And and I, I was picturing like somebody had done parentheses with with periods in them yeah, to, yeah. to draw yeah, out. That's what they did, right? A, that's what it is. Yeah. And, you know, I wondered. I had never seen that before. I thought it was great. <laughs> Bob, you know what? Let me, let me ask you, I almost crashed man. my car. I don't know if you've ever come across this, but like like King loves to do this a lot. Like if you if you read the the Dark Tower books or whatever, mm-hmm. there there will come a point where where he doesn't even try to describe the picture that that's you know represented in his world. Right? He'll 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 get to a point where he'll write, "We saw a thing on the wall and it looked like this," and then it's no shit like a drawing in his yeah. book, and it'll show like the eye of the Crimson yep. King or whatever. Yeah. yeah. How would you, as as an audiobook narrator, how would you deal with something like that? Because I might want to do that. Well, it depends. Sometimes the publisher will tell me, you know, like what what he would like said here or whatever, or I'll just say, should we say like, uh, and on the wall was the eye of the Crimson King. I see. I mean, okay. that's yeah. I, that that's a good example. I wish I could give you another one. Um, well, boobies is a good one, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are other ones. Who was it? One of you that uh, Nick was it? No. Somebody had. I think it was one of you had like a code in there. Oh no, it was Jeremy Robinson. He had mm. a drawing or something right in the beginning, and I think what? we just skipped over. It. We just. I think we just left it. Um, you could have just said, "Here, Jamie, Jeremy got fucking lazy." Hey, I had to plug my computer in. I had to plug my computer in. I'm trying to eat dinner. <laughs> where, where is your face, though? I'm curious. Why can't we see you? Yeah. You what? Sure? Yeah. It's dark. I see him. You're dark. You can't. You mean, where am I right now? Oh. No, no, you're you're he's, dark. He's, it's oh. it's a little dark in your room. I saw your teeth though. That was <laughs> yeah. nice yeah. and pretty. He looks like a younger version of me before the world crushed me. <laughs> it's nighttime here. I can't. I can't yeah. get it. It's this is about as good as I'm going to get it. All you right. know what I have right here? Watch this, because every time my lighting sucks whenever I do these things. But watch, see that looks yeah. terrible, right? Yeah. Right in front of me, I have a book light. Ah, uh-huh, and that needle book light. Huh. That's a Just good idea. Right up. Yeah, I've got a big old. Mm-hmm. Turn off the book light, though, Bob. It's it's a little. No, it's not the book light. It blotchy. might be this one. Hold on. <laughs> How exciting is this conversation? <laughs> oh fuck it! <laughs> See, that goes off. Then my head's gone. Oh, but completely different. Oh, this would be fun. I'd do a little light show and shit. Oh, 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 I think at some oh. point. Sorry. At some point, we were supposed to talk about storytelling, and I've yes. given up on that. So, uh, but I'm uh, then I'm going to bounce off. Is your guys' thing, and I just yeah. no, man, no, no, no. I have integral to, to the story. Well, Josh, does this have to be the only one we do? We can do it again, right? I'm I'm happy to do it again. Yeah. I, I do I, it I, again. We should, this is right, affecting me now. Uh, See, yeah, no, but Craig, look. Right here, this is like an impromptu Brayfest happening. Right yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brayfest 2020. Yeah, I missed yeah. the first one, right? The one that didn't happen. Yeah. But, this, all right, but the next time we have to do one like this, we'll figure out a big, uh, you know, online thing. Because I didn't know this could happen. You know what I mean? I know you could have like a great big Zoom meeting or whatever. But I, yeah, I yeah. shit, this. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. This is cool. You know, well, yeah, you know technology is amazing, man. If we get a couple more, it looks like the opening of the Brady Bunch. 
Oh my God! <laughs> the bravest bunch. Here's okay, so. Here's here's <laughs> what I want. I want I want to get Jeremy Robinson for one. Yeah. Uh, Nick Nick said he reached out to him and he and he hadn't heard back. I want to get Keith C. Blackmore. Yeah. Because yeah. I have oh, yeah. never seen that motherfucker's face anywhere. Neither have I. Neither have I. And uh, we've 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 chatted he and I yeah. back and forth. Uh, I consider him a friend. Maybe we get uh, Michael Fuchs as well, yeah, but say that. Uh, I'm, I'm friends like, with Michael. I can talk to him. Yeah, I've ta- I've talked to him as well. We're cool. Uh, I'd I'd love to get those guys in there. We can get I'd like to there. get Michael Meme in there. Yeah, he's yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely he's yes, he's a, yes, cool yeah. Guy. yeah. He'd definitely maybe, be down. Um, maybe we can get them next time. Yes, but yeah, yeah Craig, to your, to your point, abs- I, I anytime you guys want to get together and have a drink, I'd love to talk to you guys. Yeah. It's so much fun. Yeah. Next time we're bringing out whiskey. Invited Brett. Brett. What? <laughs> you have no friends. <laughs> <laughs> these, these are the friends that I have. This is what I'm left with. <laughs> this is what I have now. Uh, look at this. All right. I'm going to bounce. I'm going to let you guys do your thing. Okay. And, uh, okay good to see you, Bob. And thanks Thank for the hillbilly. I mean, Bostonian. Oh, did you play that yet? Yeah. Did you get to oh, play I, they, they all did. heard it. It was great. All right. <laughs> Good job. I can't even do it for you now. I forgot how I sounded. Oh well, I'll do it. I swear to God, you better use it. Oh, you oh, said you're gonna, you'll you said it ridiculous, you, which is exactly how it would need special to be. in a newsletter or something. There you go. Yeah. Oh yeah, it'll be out there. Oh, look at that. Oh, real quick, Mark. Thank you very much, Mark. You got the Gretsch. <laughs> I was looking. I'm, I sold my guitar because oh. it's just sitting here and I'm not using it. Yes. And, uh, so I listed it up on Reverb. That's a great site, by the way, for like used and uh, used and new um, instruments yeah. and stuff. And uh, put it up there. And then I said, you know what? I'm just going to see if anyone, you know, on you know, my site wants <laughs> wants it. Bob, so he contacted I... me. I was like, I'll throw in an autographed Martian MP3 CD and all this other wow. stuff. And uh, and he's like, yeah, I'll do it. That you, but you got to sign the pick guard. It's like, come on. <laughs> yeah. But I did. Bob, <laughs> do I do I need to make you a guitar? You know, I was thinking about that the other day because I actually yeah, want I want to build one. All right, now I'm not I oh. I'm, I can't start from scratch. I gonna, I'm going to have to get like a blank body and all yeah. that and then I'll just kind of take it from there and putting it together. Just basic idea. That would be a fun project, but I was thinking about your cigar boxes. I got to I got to Well, um you you the the best place to start would probably be a kit. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, that that that's that's, that's good to go, like man. A, it's kind of like a fender body and neck and yeah then you know if you need if you need help wiring it up i can i can talk no about. that's gonna be the fun so it turns out like the first book guys that i ever wrote before i, I started writing right. fiction was a book on guitar making because wow. I used to be guitar make, or or uh the cigar the cigar box right well e- either way uh the the approach that i had when i was doing that was i was i was making uh, cigar box guitars and solid body electrics that were encapsulated in the cigar box. Well, I'm going to were... go get that book now. Is it still available, Josh Gaiu? Oh, yeah. it should be. It's not for sale. I put it out for free. Well, where it's the fuck for... is it, Josh Gaiu? Yes. Just... Uh... <laughs> what I want to know is I'll I'm going to narrate. Link. What's Dude, that, Craig? Bob, narrate this book. Huh? Is Bob going to narrate your, just, your guitar book? That would be the most boring book in the uh, history yeah, of mankind. Be... It would be a bestseller. Part yeah, you can read the two. Phone book. Wiring. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I... Chapter one. <laughs> yeah. No, Finding I, I right before way. I, before, like I've, I've always been uh, doing creative things, and before I got into writing, I, I was a custom guitar maker, and I did decently with that. Uh, the, uh, I, I made some stuff. Send the them. Did you send me pictures or a, or a YouTube link? I forget, but they they're beautiful. I don't they're remember anymore. See, I, t- I should have taken up something small like that. I, I I always overshoot. I built a custom chopper that was ten foot long, Jesus. motorcycle chopper. Then I built an airplane. Got about halfway done on that. Then I was like, I'm going to write a novel. I mean, how hard can it be? Twenty years <laughs> later, I figured that was pretty damn I hard. Like an aircraft, I can write a book. Yeah. Well, I loved I loved making guitars because it was always you know I was always good with my hands. I was good with uh, wood, you know, carving stuff. Cool. Uh, and just the the problem was it became too stressful because I, yeah. I I had a like it, it, there there was one point where it kind of took off like like Dennis Casey 
mm. who was a guitarist for Flogging Molly, uh, <laughs> hooked up guy. with me and had me build him a guitar. Right. And uh, there, there were a few other guys that were that were of prominence that I had made instruments for. And then I was like, like my idea was, okay, I'm going to make one of these fucking cigar box guitars, but it's going to be studio quality. I want the goddamn thing to outplay mm. any of the big name instruments that are out there. And as an engineer, that that's a problem that's fun to me. And I got I got pretty good at it. I got a decent client list. Next thing I know, I have a waiting list for for making these damn things that's two years long. Wow! And wow. and every every free minute that I have, it's it's out in the wood shop. It's yep. it's carving on another hunk of wood and it's like every every moment that i'm not out there like working on a guitar i'm feeling guilty about so what That's i how did I feel about all your books when i tell you i'm yes working on sir <laughs> <laughs> i've never They're heard coming. that before <laughs> yeah but it was it was like at a, at a, at a certain point like it, I, actually it was it was probably like about a year before i started writing books where I just decided I'm done. I I, I can't yeah. do this anymore. It's too stressful. Well, I worked down my list and and got the last few out and said I'm you know I close it all down. I'm not going to build anymore. I'm 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 going to do one for me. <laughs> so so it'll well, the be last fun. <laughs> the last two guitars that I made were for my dad. That oh, there you it. go. There was a there was so there that were, was, had to have been some pleasure in that. Well, yes, absolutely. To your there, it was a, it was a Christmas present. I made my dad one traditional cigar box guitar with a hollow body that played nice. acoustically and then i made him a solid body electric nice. and uh it, you know it, it it hangs on his wall in his house he can't not play music it. to save his life he's oh. fucking <laughs> tone deaf but you know it was, it was it was something that i made that i could give nice. to him it was, it was a good christmas cool that's very yeah. cool man well sure he cherishes that i'm gonna I'm, I'm, oh hey here. seriously where's your book because i mean can i download there it, it is right there thank yeah. you mark you Look want to learn Mark. how to make a Mark. cigar box. <laughs> my man. Well, yeah. The, so, uh, the characterization is not that great in the story, you know? It's... You're writing subpar anyway, so I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah, for, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, that's ironic. But anyway, but yes, but since Mark's there, thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, Mark, Mark was cool guy. I, I did a Zoom meeting with him. He was the Viper pilot. You know, F-16 fighters. Wow. Yeah. So I'll tell you what, Bob, I'd, I'd come out of retirement to make one for you, though. Would you? Cool. I would. No, you you put me on the map. I'll get so yelled I'd... at for that. <laughs> like, why? I'd where's Josh's new book? Don't worry. I'm going to learn to play Twinkle Twinkle for you guys for Christmas. Wow. I can play. I just, yeah, no, no. Th thank you. That's very nice. If you want to take 10 years to do it, then fine. But. Oh, good. You have time. I'll, I'll have it done in 12. Okay, great. I appreciate it. Maple fretboard. I'm going to need like a uh, big leaf oak. Uh, Maple? <laughs> Maple? What? Yeah, you heard. You well, want? You want I'll do you maple, but. All right. But what? Yeah. Northwood? I want north. What is it? Northwood ash? Is that what I want? I like a, I like a darker wood. I don't want no swamp ash. I got swamp ash right here, which is why I got to go. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> You know what the best the best body wood out there in my opinion is African mahogany. It's it's like it's killer. It no, carves like though, butter. It? We're not talking about anything that has to do with storytelling now. I know. It's sorry. Bullshit. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> I'm sorry, guys. One second. Josh and I. Are... <laughs> I've got I've got like three whole people in this conversation. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? <laughs> All right, I'm leaving. I've said I'm leaving. I'm going to leave. You guys, it's it's just fun. I appreciate it, and uh, I was enjoying it before I cracked in so next one we do man i'll i'll get it planned out and and let you know and, and maybe cool. you hang out a little longer cool right. and nick i'll send you a light yes a light. <laughs> one <laughs> like thank you all right guys have a good night night light, night light. Easy, bob. Good, good, night, good to bob. see you man Bye. and i gotta go and nick's gotta give his dog uh medication right yeah, yeah. Uh, she uh, like an hour ago so i didn't Greg, know i'm sorry to see you go yeah, um, I'm gonna have to go myself. So. Let's do this again, you guys. And like, uh, I, I, I guess we're done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you make a new guitar? Because if you're gonna take 12 years, I might actually learn how to play a guitar in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have no musical talent whatsoever. Oh man, I, I have to. I don't know that. Crack out all my tools and see what I got in the shop, man. 
with that beard and if you make it a banjo i'll be running comes with a free bottle of lube <laughs> and i was running yeah i just got an idea for seeing the book i'm gonna i'm gonna put that in. <laughs> okay go down. yeah all right guys, yeah, no, I, I, thanks I, I, the audience there yeah yeah thanks for everybody and brian's good to see you on here yeah some uh, some disturbing comments in the audience but uh someone's oh, telling me to get my dog a shot she's okay yeah. like, she's she it's fine but she needs it like she yeah. gets yeah. she gets two shots a day like you know like a normal i don't yeah. know what kind of you know she just gets it at eight every night and it's 8 45 so she needs oh. to go basically yeah but, Anyways, no, I just see someone writing in the comments, Nick, please give her the shot, please. <laughs> so, don't worry, I take very good care of my little Shih Tzu and our yeah. Pitbull. We have a Pitbull and a Shih Tzu, and the Shih Tzu oh. has diabetes. Really quick, I'll, uh, I'll say, uh, guys, we'll, we'll do this again. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe. Thanks, I, I, I love Thanks talking you. to you guys. We'll we'll get something wrapped up or, or, or planned quickly. Yeah. Thanks for putting it together, Josh. You're the one that did this. Yes, yeah, so yeah, Josh. No, I, I, I just, I, I thought it would. Yeah. So, so I, now, I, I thought it would be good to have, to have the discussion. I thought it would be a lot of fun. We got to yeah. do it again, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Next time, we'll maybe we should do more of like a, I don't know, like an outline for, for uh, to keep us on track, maybe, and then we can have Bob pop in, and then have, I don't know, we could dress up like Craig did at the beginning. <laughs> I don't know. I I, I, I feel know. like this was fun, man. Outlines are for suckers. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, I I had a lot of fun. Yeah, you just you just let it go, I man. Mean, it's, 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 you know, Craig, get this. I don't know what's going on with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, right, man. enjoy it, guys. Good night. Cheers. All right, Thanks, everybody, you. take care. Right. See Cheers. you. Bye. Everybody, be safe. Yep. Take care. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you guys. later. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Dean. Good to see you, man. See you, man.